I used to do a lot of running when I was younger and kind of realised that I could run all right. My dad used to take me down to our local oval and train me and I made it to nationals the first time when I was in year six. Then the year after, in year seven, I made nationals again, but I placed second in the 800 that year. Go Piper! Go Piper! I guess I realised that I had potential in track running if I wanted to pursue it. But I'd done nippers since I was little and continued that into kind of the senior club and it got to the point where I was having trouble training for both. I was only 16 at this point, but it felt like the end of the world. It felt like I was having to make a huge decision about my future and what I wanted to do, but I just had this dream since I was 10 years old that I wanted to be an Iron Woman and I have no regrets. I love being an Iron Woman. Piper Harrison is an amazing upcoming athlete. She's such a phenomenal competitor and you can see that she's going to go a long way in the sport. She's so great on her craft and I know how hard she's been working on her swim leg because she always says it's her weakness, but I think she's fantastic at it. So uh, she's going to have a bright future ahead of her and I can't wait to see that next generation coming through. It is lactate tolerance, your ability to be able to handle the pain. We want to go above your threshold. And this is your ability to be able to surge within a race and keep surging. Piper Harrison's burst onto the scene in the last 12 months. We saw her in the summer surf last year. She was at top of all of the rankings. But this year she is proving she is a force and she is one of the best competitors in the summer surf without a shadow of a doubt. I would say that I'm in a bit of an apprenticeship stage. I've only just stepped into this profile as an Iron Woman. I'm trying hard to win the MVP point score this year. The MVP is a great way for me to push myself in all different legs. Ultimately, I hope in a few years' time that pays off and my iron becomes stronger for it. As a young kid, I always dreamt of being a professional motocross rider. Kind of that dream faded pretty quickly because I live right on the beach. As any young kid who loves their sport and follows the top, they want to be an Ironman. I think at that age, I thought how cool that would be, racing big surf. And back then, this is pre-action sport. There's men and women on 18-foot surf skis and 10-foot six paddle boards that were paddling out in 10 to 15-foot waves. Like, that was extreme. And for me, I was looking at that going, I want to do that. He's one of the best trainers I've seen. He's tough, really tough, and it shows in his racing. Won't give you an inch. He's been my arch rival. One of the people I look back in my career and, and say, like, he was able to, like, bring the best out of me. He's able to do things that not many other people can do. There's a lot of, like, respect there between us. You know, Ali and I go a long way back to the very start. You know, for him to say that we've had some amazing battles and I'm one of the toughest competitors he's ever raced, and I'm proud to hear that because I put my foot on the line and I give it absolutely everything. Kendrick Louie is the ultimate competitor. He burst onto the scene as this superstar up and comer, as a champion, winning Ironman series, winning Summer of Surf titles, winning all the big events that you want to win. I think a few people thought that he was done, but he just continues to show if he's on the line, he can win races no matter where it is, no matter what the distance. So Kendrick Louis, you can never write him off. And if you do, do it at your own peril because he is a champion and he will continue to be a champion until he decides to hang it up. As an 11-year-old kid, following the sports, looking up to his idols, wanting to be that guy, if you'd said to me then, you're going to be that guy, I probably would have laughed and thought, not in my wildest dreams. Fast forward 15 years, I've lived my childhood dream. I'm still living it. I look back and go, you know, as an 11-year-old kid, this is where you wanted to be. You're here now. Let's enjoy it. 
make every day count when you're living out your childhood dream because there is an expiry date on what you're doing and um, it's coming pretty quick. I do know Hayden Cotter pretty well. I actually coached him at Mooloolaba. So when Kendrick and I were there, and he was a fish then, and he's a fish now, and I'm always reminding him, saying, mate, just remember who taught you. <laughs> I did nippers from under eight to Malula Bar and I didn't enjoy it at the start, but I think by the tens, elevens, twelves, I really started to enjoy it and have fun with it. Now I'm getting a bit older, I can take it more serious. Now I hate it, 10 7. So I did swimming for oh, five years, maybe, on the Australian team. I went off to World Champs in 2019, I think I ended up ninth in the 5k. I'd done a few World Cups for 10k open water as well. I did that pretty high level of open water swimming for a fair bit there and just missed out and going to the Olympics. He's trying to go back to back to back. This will be three times in a row for Hayden Cotter if you can get across the sand. Now I've moved away from that swimming side of thing. I've come to surf and it's just going back to the roots really and get the results and yeah, enjoy it. He was your series champion from last year. He was your Hayden Kenny champion from last year and he's now your chore and partner's Hayden Kenny classic champion for this year. Is he unbeatable? I just love it. I mean, you go down to the beach every day, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> You're not living a bad life if you go on the beach training, so... Training is the be-all and end-all, really. If you don't do the training, you get found out in these races, so... Hey, Hayden, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you doing? Doing the CWT? Yeah. Enjoy your session. Cool. Thank you. I think I grew up, I was pretty young, making Australian teams for swimming, and I probably didn't do as much recovery as I needed to do. You're just young and dumb and have some fun, and she'll be right. Uh, so we're going to start off at the top here. So just let me know if anything's kind of a little bit sore than usual. And looking after your body, that's it. That's your whole motor right there. I mean, if you lose your body, you're done. I'm 22 now, and you got Kendrick, who's early 30s, Ali's early 30s, and in 10 years' time, hopefully, I'm still racing and swimming and doing all these Ironmans as well, just like they are. Oh, mate. The hot spot, Dolce Terra. Yeah. Looks good. Best brekkie in town. <laughs> Big man, Dave. In for breakfast. Hayden Cotter, he's this young superstar, up and comer, great swim, great board, great ski. He's going to be the future of the sport. And he gets down there and realises, I've got a hell of a lot to learn with Kendrick Louie. He's done it all before, probably two or three times, and he's done it at the highest level. I think those two together will make for a very scary combination. Oh, mate, we've just got a uh, finished training session. OK. Ahead of this weekend. We're racing Beautiful. Friday, Saturday. Good. We'll get you fueled up for today, boys. And, yeah, what are we feeling like today? I'll get an omelette. Yep. With a bit of protein in it. Maybe a, maybe a side of avocado. Absolutely. Yeah, mate, we'll just, just the usual for you. Yeah, I'll just stick to the usual. Just get the a usual? egg roll, yeah. Bacon egg roll, perfect, yeah. yeah. chocolate, that's it. OK, let's leave it to me. I'll get it all organised yeah. underway. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, right, boys. Dave. My relationship with Hayden, it's a cool one. It's quite unique. He keeps his cards quite close to his chest. How are you feeling ahead of the weekend? Yeah, be interesting. All right? Yeah, not too bad. So when it comes to race week, you don't really know what Hayden does, because Hayden comes in, he does his swim, he might do 2K here, 3K there, he might throw down a couple of fast, hard 100s, which no one can go anywhere near as fast as him, and you go, oh, I'm screwed. I don't need recognition. I'm on a mission. Yeah. I'm paying dues. Yeah. I'm staying up, it's getting late, you're doing good, I'm doing great. Yeah, so it's just a lot of learning from Kendrick. He's one of the best to ever do it. And then we train in the ocean every afternoon together, we train in the pool every morning, so we try and learn as many things as I can. I think him and I are very similar in the sense of we would die with our boots on. You know, there's only a handful of them that I've had guys like this in my team that you know that once they hit the water or go in there, absolutely bury themselves. And having a guy like that in my team and training with him is, is bloody cool. Manly 
Sydney Beach, Sydney, Australia, it's as good as it gets. People talk about Bondi being this special location there. Manly is exactly the same when it comes to surf sports, but the carnival itself has run since the beginning of surf sports there, and it was the mecca. And you add the summer of surf on top of that, and it's become maybe the biggest behemoth that we have in surf sports. A thousand competitors on the beach lining up, beautiful conditions, 10,000 people walking past the Corso every single day. And it's an absolute mix that surf sports could not be any better at any better place. You know, there's an energy there that's just unrivaled. These guys just do, and girls do an incredible job training the whole bit. Competition is just extraordinary. And on a Friday, all the trials, all the rip charges, the whole thing, it's unbelievable. And the crowd is huge, huge. Having the summer of surf in Manly, I had mixed emotions. I was extremely pumped that it was on my home beach. But on the flip side, I felt the expectation I had to deliver. And I really wanted to deliver for that. So I knew, absolutely, let's just get after it. The top eight went through, so I didn't need to prove anything in that race. However, I wanted to get myself off to a good start, build some confidence, rolling into round two. It is a confidence thing. You know, you go in, you're in the second leg, you're up the front, you're doing well. Keep pushing. Coming in on that wave, I'm in the zone. Things float in that. Let's just do a good warm down, let's regroup, let's get ready to go again. It all happens really quickly, and a lot of the time it's excited nerves. This time I feel it was a little different. The strategy for the first can in round two was I knew I had some strong swimmers in my heat, so I do like to position myself nicely. Yeah, on my way in, I was sitting equal first with Connor Mags, turn around and there was a wave for the back markers, which brought another 10, 10 guys through. However, I ran around, picked my ski up, and threw my ski down quite aggressively. Not out of anger, but just, I wanted to get it down, jump on the ski, let's get away. You know, I was trying to save myself half a second or a second, right? And in that, by the time I jumped on it, and then ended up on the edge of a bank, which I got hit by probably four or five shore break. I looked over to my right, there was probably eight guys just paddled past me in the room. So I went from sitting in second on the way in to running the transition in seventh to now sitting in 14th within that split second. I was in that red zone. It's exactly where you don't want to be. To be honest, I never gave up. I never surrender because in our sport, a wave could come from the back and that could bring me from 14th back to fifth and realise I've just got to get in that top eight to get through to the rapid charge. I gave it absolutely my all and wasn't enough. Finished tenth, missed out by two spots. I had the expectation from myself that I wanted to do really well and wanted to do it for my friends and family and the community and had to swallow that pill that it wasn't gonna be. You know, if I could sum it up in one word, I was embarrassed. I was truly embarrassed, not by my performance, I was embarrassed by the result. I thought, thank God the cameras aren't following me home. Like, I was, I was gutted, mate. Like, I was absolutely gutted. <laughs> and just went like, why am I doing this? Like, why do I continue to do this? Like, it's full of heartbreak. There is way more lows than there are highs. And when things are going good, everything's easy. Life's easy when shit's good. It's when things aren't good, how do you get out of that rut? So dust yourself off, get back on the horse and keep going and that'll show more grit and determination and I guess that fight that you have in you than winning a race will.
been a tough learning curve, the series start for Piper, but that was always to be expected. I think she's ready to go. She'll do her best today, and then she'll chase out all the individuals tomorrow, and I think she's on the right path. The 10,000 point Summer of Surf Shore and Partners events have become so big and this is the second one of the season so no one's going down there just to have a casual paddle around, like everyone wants it bad, everyone wants to be in that final. So you step on the line, you do one race and then you've got to do another iron and hopefully you can be in the top two positions, automatically make it through to the final, but if not then you're doing a third iron. So it's actually a massive afternoon of racing. Going out on the board in that last leg, I thought, OK, I have a good shot here of coming in the top two. I just need to make sure I nail everything from now to the beach. Then I pulled down that wave. I had to look side to side and realise no one was next to me and that I had come second. I was, yeah, really relieved. I thought, yeah, I've done it. I've made the final, which was really exciting. I don't want to get burned. We're getting video. I've got my makeup on. Come down to the home beach. It's literally five minutes down the road, so pretty stoked to come down and yeah, have one of the bigger carnivals of the year down at Manly. Everyone wants that top 20 spot, so it's not easy to get into. I think you've got to beat 150 people, so you definitely need to be on your A game ready for that. I'm definitely a swimmer, so my goal is definitely just trying to get to the front. Swim first in an iron order is something that I really enjoy and it works well for me, so it definitely opens up a lot of avenues that I can kind of work through and just try and yeah, understand what's going on. Ran around transition, I'm having a look to see where everyone is and obviously I can tell they're a little bit further behind than usual, so it's definitely something you just got to grab with both hands and when it does happen, which isn't very often, you just got to run with it. As soon as I got that wave in the board, it's just happiness, to be honest, <laughs> knowing that I think top three auto qualified for the final, so it was definitely just a sigh of relief and, yeah, just lap it up while I can. Definitely feeling today a bit better than what I have been, so it's good to just know I'm on the up a little bit and, yeah, it worked out well, really well. So at Manly, there were 127 people that put their foot on the line for the iron, which is just incredible. Just concentrate when you're coming off cans and know where you are. Like, try and come to the inside on the graft a little bit, yeah? Just go for it on the swim. When you know you've made the final, it's really exciting to know, OK, I'm doing well here. I'm in the top 20 in the country, pretty much. She's an athlete that's had to work very hard and, and she hadn't made a final the year before. So she came into Alex and then coming into Manly, she made back-to-back -back iron finals. So uh, her progression is on the right path. As we are off and racing, as we go a fast start off the beach. And it's going to be a slow burn for her and something she needs to stick at and stay dedicated to that and she'll progress along nicely. But this is the one that she wants to do really well in, yeah. She's trained all year for the irons. Individuals are done and dusted, so, she, you know, it'd be nice to just get a top six, top ten finish. I just love putting my foot on the line and knowing they're racing against the best iron woman in the sport. For me, I think the priority is just keep racing, but then testing myself and trying to improve in all legs to then, at the end of the day, that will better my iron in the long run. Slewed, that's all right. Not over yet, it's not over yet. Piper Harrison loves the summer of surf. She turns up everywhere, every weekend, and does every race. She's the future of the sport, and I think a lot of people sleep on Piper Harrison and just how good she is. They know she's good, but I don't think they understand just how good she can be in the next couple of years. I had a pretty decent ski paddle and got a bit <laughs> crashed into on the way to shore and just ended up falling off my ski and having to swim in, which is never ideal. If you're doing that in a field as strong as this, you're never going to end up placing very well in the race, but onwards and upwards. <laughs>
I feel like I'm not racing at 100% right now, so someone over Texas, the Australian team, and got COVID and maybe two months after and I could barely even swim. So to be up there for maybe even one leg or two legs is definitely giving me a lot of confidence in the future. So something I was pretty happy about and could just try and enjoy it, really. How we going, mate? Mate, we good. Happening? Oh, a bit of FOMO, that's all right. Hopefully uh, the young fella, he's in good shape. He's bloody doing well. I think he's in the zone, so I'm gonna leave him be for a bit. But... I was super proud of him. I know the effort that he's put in and what he's capable of. Watching his round two was a moment of all his preparation and his hard work just clicking. And I'm pumped to support him. And I said, mate, if you want my hand, let me know. But no, man, I want your assistance, I want your guidance, and I want, you know, some help. I said, um, what do you want help with? He said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this suits him. Longer swim. And I thought, you know what, mate? Have a look at how you qualify for this race. String together a race like that and you'll win this. Swim leg first. I'm going for Joey Collins, Hayden Cotter. I can't pick him. Yeah, the local boy. Yeah, you know, the nickname that the boys in the surf club have given him is Iceman. He has dead set ice in his veins when it comes to racing. But look at Hayden Cotter. He's out in front. He's right there. He's about to turn. You know, he's the type of guy I would look along the line and see him and I would hate to be going against him. Look at the charge of the light brigade. This is where it starts to get interesting. We go Odin Parish, Cora Taylor, Dan Collins, Joel Piper. We come up through there. There's the local boy, Hayden Cotter. And he's still in it. Came out second wave, so he's in a pack for third through to 12th now, so just got to hang in there, get a little bit of luck and you're back in. Hayden Cotter comes from the background of so many superstars we've seen before. The likes of your Kai Hurst and your Lani Pallisters. Your swim leg's your most important leg in an Ironman. Hayden Cotter has a weapon of a swim leg. It's a weapon that maybe one or two other competitors have at the moment. And you put that on the back of strong ski, strong board, and a humble personality who just wants to work hard and be successful. He will be competitive in every single Ironman he does off the back of that alone. I think I can be there right now, to be honest. I think I have the belief, it's just, not the results, the showing. You just need that few results to go your way and then next thing you know, you're off and running and that's it. But it's just trying to break through that barrier and get there and, you know, hopefully next year, big off season again and that's what it'll be. Bondi Beach, the most famous beach anywhere in the world. The best surf sports athletes. It's high pressure high stakes games in one of the most picturesque locations anywhere in the world. You wouldn't want to be anywhere else.